Hey everybody, it's me, Will. And me, Kristen. And we have some really cool news to share with you that we are super pumped about. We have joined Bloody FM. That's this right. This is the podcast network from Bloody Disgusting, the website that you may know of with tons of horror news. And we're in there, baby. We're in there. We're joining we're the family. There. We're on there. Halloweenies. Yep. Horror Queers. The Losers Club. Guide to the Unknown. Yes. So scary, many amazing shows. Scare me to sleep. Mayfair Society. Yes. Creepy. Everything. Guide to the Unknown. Yeah. So uh, you can check us out now on, I guess, Bloody FM's website. They're going to be putting out an announcement, which is very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, now, here's what it means to, to listeners. Because, one, this is exciting for us because it feels like we're taking, like, a major leap forward. We've never been part of a network like this before. No, it's awesome. So here are a couple things that will be cool for you in the future. First of all, we get to have other opportunities now that we've joined the Bloody Disgusting family, which means possible, possible appearances at conventions, live shows. Um, we are going to have access to artists to draw better merch for us. Um, that's all coming down the pipe. The doors may be opening here. Yeah. Now, here's the big one. They're going to start being able to advertise Guide to the Unknown on other shows, which really helps us boost the signal like crazy. Yeah. But it also means they're going to start advertising on Guide to the Unknown, mm -hmm. which is why instantly the second that ads are part of Guide to the Unknown, we are going to be still offering an ad free version of the show on patreon.com slash gttu pod that's right so everybody who's in the ghost tier and on up will be getting that ad free version in your feed you don't have to change anything if nope. you're a ghost a demon or a banshee boom you're getting the ad free version of guide to the unknown the second that episodes drop mm -hmm. um and uh, everybody else we're going to try to make sure that we do ads right this is brand new for us um more than anything, we want to make sure that you, the listeners, the viewers, are happy with Guide to the Unknown, how we're handling things. So you better believe that we're going to be paying attention because mm -hmm. this is totally uncharted territory for us. Right. But uh, we thank you all so much for your support over the course of six years. I and it's, it seems unbelievable that we're taking this, this leap to join Bloody FM. It really does. It's humongo. So just to give you a heads up of what you can expect ad-wise, we're going to have ad breaks in the beginning of the show, in the middle of the show, and at the very, very end. So you can just kind of prepare yourself mentally. And we're going to try something out here. Mm -hmm. we're, I think on Guide to the Unknown, we've always try things and then maybe <laughs> maybe changed of course if things are not working but uh, i think we're probably going to start the show normal and then about a minute in you're going to hear us throw to a commercial break it might take us a while to actually get the ads yes. by the way so don't be alarmed if for a while you hear like after this <laughs> commercial break and nothing happens Dead silence um but I'm not just talking in the james wan movie oh that's a dynamite movie dead silence i know um but so that's going to be starting very, very soon. We're not up and running yet, but we are part of the network right now. We signed a one-year contract. Yeah. And it's already begun. The clock is ticking. We're super pumped. We're thrilled. I can't wait to see what happens, what other cool things we might get to do with you, what other cool things we might be able to offer. Um, yeah, it rules. So thank you so, so much for being with us and enjoy the show. Enjoy. Dr. Bray Rossiter. This should be like a historical achievement, but it all is... It's all wrong. He conducted the first ever autopsy in Connecticut. Oh, how'd he do? <laughs> you can be the judge, okay? Hello, welcome to Guides the Unknown. I'm Kristen. And I'm her little brother, William. And this week we are talking about goodies aplenty. Goodies as in good wives. Yes. That was the name back in the day for a missus. So I'm going to be talking about goody garlic. Well, I will be talking about uh, goody Ayers. Yes. Very good. Goody Ayers. Now, uh, before we launch into it, you already said it's goody is a word that's short for good wife. Meaning that this was a way that you would address somebody way back in the day, in like the 1600s, 1700s, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so you would potentially be Goody Anderson. I know. I tried to change my Instagram handle to Goody Anderson. It was taken in any acceptable iteration. Yes. Yeah. This this episode was partly inspired by us covering Goody Cole in episode 315, which was an Urban Legends episode. Okay. Where we got into this whole Goody notion. Yes. And so a lot of people thankfully sent us in what goody means, which is why I thought it might be worth explaining what a goody is before we really launch in. Mm -hmm. um, so 
you would say, hi, Goody Anderson. But if you were of a higher class, you might have said, hi, Mistress yes. oh, Anderson. Really? But because you're so low class, people would say, hi, Goody Anderson. <laughs> Would they? Yeah, they definitely would. You're so low class, I'd be trying to wipe you off the bottom of their shoe. <laughs> you have to face it. <laughs> it's just what would have happened. It's true. But so, um, uh, weird, I, I just don't kind of understand that it's like a, a the upper class, low class notion is, yes. is kind of puzzling to me how that's even measured. But so that was how it was sort of used is my understanding. Although there might have been different uses of it in the US versus Europe, mm -hmm. which is also a whole ambiguous thing. But... There's a point made uh, that the term goody today is purely a historical term, obviously. You wouldn't actually right. say, hi, goody, Anderson. <laughs> but you do often talk about goodies when you're talking about people who were accused of witchcraft. Yes. Which is why to talk about goodies is essentially, it seems, to talk about witches. Absolutely. So who are you talking about? I'm going to be talking about goody garlic. Okay. I can't wait to get into it. There's a lot to unravel and discover. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that right after this commercial break. Okay, so goody garlic. Yes. Um, first of all, real quick, I want to harken back to a bad joke that I made a couple of weeks ago because something similar <laughs> kind of came up okay. today when I was telling... Are you trying to clear the air or did you... <laughs> no, no. No. Say something inappropriate that might... No, no the stupid uh, <laughs> Heidi, I, I'm a fan of your holes. Joe. Oh, Heidi Hole. Uh, a reviewer named Heidi left a review and Chrissy said, Heidi, I'm a fan of your holes. As in Heidi holes. And Terrible. today I was telling Ryan and my friend Joe that we were going to be talking about goodies. Yes. And he said, oh, I, I could tell you about some goodies. Goody two shoes, Sam goody, goody goody gumdrop. <laughs> and I was like... See, this is the kind of joke. This is the good material that you enjoy. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, goody garlic. Goody garlic. So I found out about this. First of all, you lied, William. Um, you lied terribly. Um, our old episode about whatever the hell is not what inspired this episode. What inspired this episode is that I was uh, I saw an ad for the Hamptons Who Done It Fest or something, and I clicked on it. And one of the things that was featured was a cemetery tour and telling the story of Goody Garlic. So I told you, oh, we should do goodies. And so you just thought that you'd wait to embarrass me publicly. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt the spiel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you did lie. Goody Garlic. So actually, to the stakes with you. You know, I like lying. It suits me. <laughs> um, Goody Garlic as a name of an individual is so... Perfectly mysterious and weird and like witchy in issue. Can I just quickly no, ask, not. was she accused of a yes, witchcraft? Yes. Okay. If she's accused of witchcraft, I think it's okay to say what I'm about to say. She was wronged, of course. Oh, yeah. Because there are no real witches. Spoiler <laughs> alert. But like garlic and witches, you just think about some sort of herbs and spices or. Well, yeah. Like right? witches work with the natural elements, depending on what kind of witch you are. So garlic seems very appropriate. Plus her name is spelled garlic, like the regular word with a K at the end. Oh. So it's almost like magic with a K. Yes. Garlic. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It's perfect. Um, so this took place well before the Salem Witch Trials, why, which is why I think that this is kind of famous, because um, I don't know if it was the first person accused of witchcraft, but definitely before we were all talking about it being like an en masse sort of thing. So uh, Yeah, I came across this too. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, but, go for it. Because I, I came across this when I was researching my goodies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think about witches, like if you think about people, people being accused of witchcraft, I feel like you instantly... Think about the Salem witch trials, yeah. which makes total sense. But uh, in looking into this, I found out that the Salem witch trials happened in 1692 mm -hmm. to 1693. Oh, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, um, okay. Uh, there are so many. Uh, that, that was by no means the Salem witch trials, the first ever time that people were accused of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And there had been previous witchy panics. Yeah. Like 50 years prior. Yeah. Which is kind of not mind blowing. I don't want to oversell it like, you know, a YouTuber being like, what? I know. But like, I, I was pretty surprised. To hear. Not knowing anything, mm -hmm. I would have assumed the Salem witch trials were so well known because it was the first. The first of its kind. Yeah. We should do that someday. 
Yeah, we definitely should. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think all over the world, maybe before the Salem witch trials, I guess I would assume there have been things like this. But I think more piecemeal. I think maybe the Salem, maybe, I don't know. Maybe the Salem witch trials were the first time that like woman after woman after woman was being accused. It seems like it all happened within a year. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think it was like especially heinous is the thing. Yes. But to know that it had been going on for decades decades prior was pretty surprising it's crazy yeah so um so the events that happened to goody garlic took place in 1658 this was 35 years before the salem witch trials and this happened in east hampton so okay. that's why i saw it on the hampton whodunit con or whatever it's right. called um and the hamptons are like the very tip of long island so it's in new york um at this time the town or whatever you call it the settlement who knows, of East Hampton was 10 years old. There were only 34 families living there. Whoa. And the vibes were not immaculate. <laughs> there was a ton of gossip going on and people kept like suing each other over nothing. Like there were tons of cases of slander that were going before the local judge who'd just be like, this isn't anything. Stop suing each other. Leave me alone. Right. I'll be in my chambers. Totally. The my chambers pot. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about not immaculate vibes. <laughs> So one night, a 16-year-old named Elizabeth Gardiner gave birth, and she was singing a psalm to okay, her baby, sure. who was being taken care of by an attendant, like her friend who had helped with the birth, when all of a sudden, that peaceful scene broke, and she started screaming. Now, this is a quote from people who were there. Something fun about this is that there were a lot of quotes from real people, and they're very, like, of the time 1600s yeah. talk. Mm -hmm. um, this one isn't so much, but still. A witch, a witch, now you are come to torture me because I spoke two or three words against you. <laughs> two or three words against you and no more I and know. no less. And that's enough to get tortured, apparently. Oh, evidently. Her father was a ma man whose name was Lion Gardner, and he was the big wig in town, partially because he'd been a, a military officer previously. Okay. And also he was kind of rich and had like a lot of land and employed a lot of people in the town. Um, what do you see? He asked her. A black thing at the bed's feet, she answered, flailing all over the place against something that nobody could see. So she's Ooh. like freaking out. The next day, her mom, Mary, who hadn't been at the birth the day before because she was sick, came to see Elizabeth. And this is a quote from Mary. I went there and presently went to her bed and asked Betty how she did, how she was. She put out her hand. Oh, mother. And she cried and I cried and she said, mother, I am bewitched. I asked her who she saw and she said, goody garlic in the further corner and a black thing in the hither corner, both at the feet of the bed. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. Instantly knew that it was goody garlic specifically who right. was responsible for what she was seeing. Mm -hmm. I guess seems to have seen her directly. At the hither corner. No, yeah. the further corner. The fur <laughs> Apologies. Yeah. Um, I know. So then sadly, Elizabeth died the next day. But what she had said at her deathbed set off a historical and historical, excuse me, chain of events. Okay. So here's the hearing. Basically, like it, it was spread that she said it was goody garlic, like her mom, Mary said that whatever. And at this time, in the 1700s, most people really believed in witchcraft, like yeah. truly believed that it was a thing that is like, you know, as certain as, I don't know, like the weather today or something. It's just like, yeah, this is a fact of life. It's, it's, yeah, it, it's cumbersome, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, cause, cause here's a, obviously, obviously, from a modern perspective, you look back at people being accused of witchcraft mm -hmm. and like hanged or drowned or whatever. And you're like, that is barbaric right. and nightmarish and stupid. Um, but like, weirdly i mean look at the movie the witch mm -hmm. where it's like people didn't even know people didn't know what the hell was going on <laughs> you know like it's yeah, like it's the 1600s you're scared and confused mm -hmm. uh you live in the teeny tiniest community and you're witnessing people suffer horrific psychological or physical illnesses yeah and you have religion in the mix which has like a heavy dose of um mysticism to it yes i have this from my my research um, there was a legal precedent cited by devoutly Puritan colonists because of biblical passages such as Exodus twenty two eighteen, thou shalt thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, 
and Leviticus 2027, a man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard cool. shall surely be put to death. So like in the Bible, they talk about like there is witchcraft and you got to kill them. Right. And then you've got people that are suffering these like profound, confusing, scary illnesses. And, and you don't understand science or medicine. No. So you go, okay. So what could this be? Maybe oh. it's the witches that we heard about who are so terrible. Got to be a witch. It, they're terrible. They would inflict terrible harm. So that's like, honestly, you draw from point A to point B. I get it. And then you get this weird, like, kill one person to to save everybody else thing. And it's like, you get away the morality of that. And it's a flawed morality, obviously. Like, totally. deeply, violently flawed. But everything is relative. Everything is relative. So it's like, it's weirdly, like, you can follow some of their breadcrumbs. You can follow the logic. That doesn't yeah. mean that it's right. No. It's obviously wrong, but I can understand how. Yeah, to be clear, I'm not saying that any of this was good <laughs> or right. I don't think that you were, and I wasn't either, for the record. It's just um, so easy today to look back and go like, what a bunch of obvious idiots. They were scared and confused and, yeah. and, and ignorant. Of course. Yeah. They didn't have the internet. No, they didn't have the tools. They didn't have the tools. Um, so... A hearing is set to see if there was, like, enough true evidence to go to trial for Goody Elizabeth Garlic. Okay. That is her full name. Um, this hearing was full of haters. So I already mentioned that this was, like, a petty-ass community. They're always suing each other for stuff and, like, talking about each other. And part of this came from the fact that a lot of people came over from Massachusetts to settle in East Hampton because they found the like dream of a new land uh, kind of lacking in Massachusetts. And so they wanted to try something else. And yeah. so they moved to New York, what was what became East Hampton. They're like, well, maybe it'll be great here or whatever. Long Island. You got, yeah. I get it. You got Jones Beach. Totally. You got Bagel Boss. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, and so like, a, and Goody Garlic was one of those people and her husband, Joshua. And so a bunch of people knew her from that time and weren't so hot on Goody Garlic. Yeah. It sounds like she might have been a little bit of a pill. Okay. Um, so she's, she, they're coming with like long time baggage. They've known, they've known this person forever. And um, then not only did this change of scenery not really reinvigorate people, they're kind of more frustrated because now they've like made this big move. Things aren't really all that much better. And so that maybe kind of bitterness led to all this cuckoo lying and backstabbing, even besides this case. Yeah. It like is at this time, East Hampton, with again, 34 families, this is a small town, small. was like full of discord. Yeah, you're right. This is cuckoo. Yeah, right? Um, plus her husband, Joshua had a good job actually working for Lion Gardner, the father oh, okay. of Elizabeth who died and accused Goody Garlic. Yeah. Um, so he had a good job. And so there's also some speculation that people were kind of like jealous that he had this plum job. Goody's his goody. Yeah. And like, they get to live the high life basically. They're getting all those goodies. Yeah. Because of the good job. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so 13 witnesses good number um gave their accounts in front of a board of three dudes the magistrates All right. and they said things like like pretty typical old time witch stuff um that she was casting the evil eye on people um she was sending out her animal familiar to do her bidding that's awesome love that um and they basically blamed anything bad on her so like deaths disappearances illnesses of livestock they're like okay so it's goody garlic obviously she put the evil eye on my oxen right and now they're sick there wasn't one person that was like sending an animal familiar out to do what you're bidding is pretty tight i would go to i'd be like knock 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 can you teach me it's awesome if i could send molly out to like shovel the driveway oh my <laughs> how god great would that be i would send crumbs out to shovel the driveway and he would just lie down oh, there's yeah. no way he would do just it. sleeping yeah eat the snow so here are some quotes yes. that are fun Good wife Simons said that she was with Elizabeth, the girl who died, unfortunately, and her husband, Arthur, on the second day of Elizabeth's illness when Elizabeth asked them to, quote, send for goody garlic, send for goody garlic. I could tear her in pieces. She is a double tongued woman. Did you not see her last night stand by the bedside ready to pull me in pieces? Ugh. And she pricked me with pins. 
always the pricking of pins. Yeah, I have something like to, that too, where it's like, and she pinched me. Yes. It's, like, it's what? always these like little teeny weeny, very localized little ouchies. I feel like pinches and pricks with pins yes. are very classic, like 1700s witch stuff. I totally agree, but I, and I wonder why is it the, is it that it is so small and sharp a pain that you would only do it just to get the obviously pinching or poking somebody with a pin is going to hurt. Yeah, we don't so like is it, it like the witch is so vicious mm -hmm. that they'll even inflict a little pain on you just to yeah, watch you it. squirm. It's worth their trouble just yeah. to do a little something to you. I also think that it's worth noting that you don't really get marks from pinches and pins. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, pins you might, right? I guess either one you certainly might. Yeah. Like if you bruise easily, sure. it's quite a pinch. Yeah. Um, I think even a pin, it would be just like a dot. But really. you're right. It is like, yeah, it's tricky to even prove that it happened at all. So all you have is someone's word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Goody Birdsall said that Goody Davis told her a story about Goody Garlic. Goody Garlic said uh, she was visiting Goody Davis and her new baby. Goody Garlic said, the child is not well for it groaneth. And Goody Davis said her heart did rise. Oh. And then that child died soon after. Oh. So Goody Davis was like, oh, Goody Garlic stopped by. She held the baby, said that he's not well because he was groaning or whatever. And then the baby died. So Goody Garlic must have done something. Yeah, obviously being there at all and mentioning that the baby was obviously under some form of discomfort. Right. That proves it. It absolutely Proof does. Proof positive. So Goody Garlic was screwed. I know. Like This is like the show Traitors. Thing. Kristen, it's How exactly so? like the show Traders. I'm about to I'm about to um compare it to another reality thing. So I'm oh, excited. excellent. Because yeah. on tra I hope everyone's watching Traders. <laughs> uh there there are some unknown number of traders hiding amongst the other people who are playing this game and you gotta try to find them. Mm -hmm. Anytime somebody uh, goes, I think that this person's a traitor, it's like a whiff is now on them. Yes. That other people go, Yeah, yeah, I think so too, because I said this and they laughed. You're absolutely And so you right. see this like this like wildfire just because yeah. of somebody whispering like i think dan's a traitor all of a sudden people are like yeah he actually is a traitor because yeah. there's so little to go off of because uh -huh. the traitors aren't slipping up and being like so when the traitors ta i mean so yeah. you really just have to look for like the most minute things to guess and hope you're correct but then how can you disprove what people are yeah. saying about you because obviously if you're not the traitor you're gonna say i'm not a traitor mm -hmm. if you are a traitor you're gonna say i'm not a traitor so there is no defense. No. I mean, what Goody Garlic probably needed to do was come to the round table and just clear the air, yeah. explain that she was a faithful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she may have been able to turn the tide. And let everybody knew, know who she's looking at as a traitor. Give some evidence. Pass yeah. the buck. Mm -hmm. Give them some meat. Yeah. Because that's them... what they're looking for. That's right. Yeah. Um, like, the, like the ring tape. You just got to pass it on and it's not your problem. If Goody Garlic was like, look... I hear what you're all saying. You're right. Your oxen is sick, right. but it was not me. It's actually Goody Bird's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know? Exactly. And I think in the Salem witch trials, some of them did that out of just desperation and fear. Oh yeah, it, it's know? logical. Like and it's if, sad. You, if you're that desperate to save your own life, uh -huh. like that's a horrible thing to live with. But you point the finger at somebody else, and what it does is all of a sudden there are multiple witches that all have to be dealt with, and, and it, it just... heats off you a little bit at least. And you can hope that maybe they'll believe you that it's not you, it's them, and move on. So but maybe horrible. Not. Yeah, it's horrible. Um. So interestingly, Goody Davis, who I just said that Goody Birds all repeated a story that she told her. Goody Davis pops up all over the testimony, okay. but never testifies herself. So this is like when Lisa Vanderpump on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills would feed gossipy info to people like Camille Grammer or Brandy Glanville and then sit back hands clean as they brought it up. Yes, I think I follow. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Phantom Menace. It's like an Emperor Palpatine playing all the sides. This was honestly a huge issue, and it's why she left the show. That's a huge issue. It is. Be you know what? Forget it. <laughs> something having to do with a Consider dog. Consider it forgotten. Something something having to do with a, jo a dog named Lucy Lucy Apple Juice. Rocked. Oh, come on. Why is it not Lucy Lucy Apple Juicy? I know. You kidding me? I know. Because a child named it, and children are stupid. Stop the juice? I know. Isn't that crazy? Damn it. Okay. So... Now, that was just the hearing to be like, so do we even go after Goody Garlic? Like, right. what's the deal? They hear all these people say that she's terrible, and they're like, all right, so we're going to hold a trial. 
But the trial wasn't held in East Hampton. It was held in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh So this was kind of embarrassing for the magistrates of East Hampton. They kicked it up to Connecticut because they were essentially saying, look, we can barely handle all these petty lawsuits happening here all the time. What are we going to do with a witchcraft trial? Totally. So we need you to handle it. What what year was this again? 1658. 1658? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there was a thing called the Hartford Witch Panic. Oh, what year? Um, evidently, it started, I think, in 16... 16- 1647. Okay, that makes sense. Was the beginning of it. Um, and then it would go basically till the end of the century. Uh-huh. So the Hartford witch panic was already in full swing at this point. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Your story is a prequel to mine. Okay, perfect. Which is great. Love yeah. that. Um, and that's very interesting because honestly, this move to Hartford ended up being so lucky for Goody Garlic. Because that very year in 1658, a man named John Winthrop Jr., did he come up? Yeah. Um, Was made governor of Connecticut, and he also headed up the court. So like I said, the vast majority of people in the 1600s absolutely believed in witchcraft. They just thought it was a fact of life and that it was consorting with the devil. But John Winthrop Jr. was skeptical of all this stuff. Um, So here's her indictment. Here's what was read before the court where you're like laying it out. Yeah. And this is the real thing they said back then, which you'll be able to tell. Elizabeth Garlic, that not having the fear of God before thine eyes, thou hast entertained familiarity with Satan, the great enemy of God and mankind, and by his help since the year 1650, have done works above the course of nature to the loss of lives of several persons with several other sorceries. And in particular, in particular, the wife of Arthur Howell of East Hampton, For which, both according to the laws of God and the established law of this commonwealth, thou deserveth to die. Wow. Yikes. But remember, Winthrop, who is hearing this case, um, and now I'm going to go into another quote from historian Walter Woodward. um, Quote, Winthrop saw witchcraft cases as an incidence of community pathology. The pattern is clear in cases in which he is involved. It's the pattern of not finding the witches quite guilty, but putting pressure on them to better conform to social norms. At the same time, he acknowledges the justification of the community to be concerned about witchcraft, but he never empowers that community to follow through on that. Yeah. So if you believe in witchcraft, Mm -hmm. this man must have been incredibly infuriating Yeah. because he would essentially hear the cases and then be like, yeah, I get it, man. You're all really upset because your family died, all like, which is horrible. Mm-hmm. And you think that this person's a witch. Now, listen, I can't convict them on the evidence that you've got, but I completely understand why you're upset. I completely understand all the concern about witchcraft. Right. Um, but w- I'm going to let her off with a strong warning, basically, because we can't prove it. Now, if you do believe in witchcraft, that's got to be a gigantic, from your perspective, like miscarriage of justice. Absolutely. Because you think this is somebody who's responsible for, for example, a loved one dying or basically like leaving you destitute because they killed all of your calves or something. Yeah, your livestock yeah. is dead. But from a historical perspective, man, thank God there was somebody that was skeptical about accusing and killing people for witchcraft. Yes. Witchery. Absolutely. Uh, what an incredible, bizarre confluence of events. I know. And like, because it was so believed in at the time to have an official that's like, like American people, I do understand you're afraid of a witch (laughs) and I do agree (laughs) witches are scary, but but I don't think Goody Garlic is a witch. That's right. Like that, it's crazy to have to ride that line. (laughs) It really is. Yeah. That must have been difficult, but go Winthrop. It's your birthday. Yeah. Um, so he rendered a not guilty verdict in this case and said, quote, it is desired and expected by this court that you should carry neighborly and peaceably without just offense to Joss, which I guess is like short for Joshua Garlic and his wife, and that they should do the like to you. 
And um, so basically he said to her, like, stop being such a weirdo yeah. and people will like you more. He said to the people, like, she's going to stop being weird. So you have to stop being weird. Just like go forth and love each other, dudes. And they actually did. What? Yes. So Goody Garlic and Joshua Garlic lived in East Hampton for all of their lives. They lived there for the next like 50 years or something. They might not have been like the most popular people. But That's amazing. They lived in, they were okay. And like their son even went on to have a highly respected job there. So it's not like the garlic name was completely besmirched by this. That is unlikely. Very. I would say. Very. That there was arguably a relatively happy ending in this story. I know. I was shocked. It was not what I was expecting to hear. That is crazy. Yeah. So garlic with a K, man. Goody garlic. It's probably not magic with a K. Goody, goody. Mm-hmm. That, that is a lucky, lucky story. I know. Um, I have a story that's a little less lucky. <laughs> a little a little less lucky. It's equally it's equally kind of surprising okay. and strange. I'm I'm gonna be talking to you about Goody Ayers. Great. At the peak of the Hartford Witch panic all right what they say was where like the heart for which panic like crescendoed oh boy but we're gonna tackle that after this if you've been enjoying guide to the unknown what you gotta know is that we've been going strong for six years with topics like this where we're talking about goodies and witches but we also do a lot of pop culture where we're talking about the blair witch as of late um it's super fun Make sure that you subscribe if you enjoy what we're doing. We'd appreciate if you would consider leaving us an Apple Podcast review. Mm-hmm. I think as of right this second, we only need 15 reviews Ooh. to hit 1,000, which has been our little, goal. We want to see that little 1K so bad. Oh, uh, we're so close, especially thanks to reviewers like this. Uh, uh, this is a review from Guts for Garters. Oh, nice. Which is great, who says, these two are the best. I woke up this morning feeling bleh. And then immediately perked up because I realized it was Friday and I'd have a new episode of Guide to listen to. I hope Kristen and Will truly know their work and efforts are so greatly appreciated and they seem like the loveliest people. That's so nice. So we fooled them. Five stars. Tricked them. That's so sweet. Thank you so much. Thanks to... Thank you for... What was it? Goo Goo for Garters? <laughs> Guts for Garters. Guts for Garters. Yes. Thank you very, very much. Thank you to everybody who's left us a review. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and if you want more of Guide to the Unknown, here's the latest from our Patreon. Patreon.com slash GTTU pod. The most recent episode is episode 148, Silent Hill Short Message. This is a brand new game that just came out for free. And we played it, gave our thoughts in the moment. Super interesting. Super weird. Yeah. I think worth checking out. So go peek uh, at patreon.com slash GTTU pod. We've got a number of tiers. Find the one that fits you. And in all likelihood, you're going to instantly unlock a ton of episodes of the Netherworld Dispatch and get new ones going forward. Demon tier gets a new show every single Monday. Yeah. Every tier gets access to our Discord. Mm-hmm. So uh, thank you so much. Go check that out, everybody. And I'm going to get into the story of Goody Ayers. Right after this commercial break. Okay, Goody Ayers and the Hartford Witch Panic. Sweet. So, um, interestingly, I mentioned that your story is almost like a a prequel Mm -hmm. because it would have taken place just before mine, like within a decade. Yeah. So, the Hartford Witch Panic peaks in 1662, and just like your story about Goody Garlic, my story starts with the death of a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the death of eight-year-old Elizabeth Kelly, whose parents were convinced that their neighbor, Goody Ayers, had caused the child's death through magic. Mm. This comes to us from legendsofamerica.com. You can find all of our sources at scaryfun.fun. It's our website. So, after an illness of several days, now thought to have been bronchial pneumonia, Mm -hmm. like with modern eyes, Elizabeth Kelly dies on March 23rd, 1662. Just days before her death, she had been fine when she returned home with a neighbor, good wife Ayers. Yeah. Goody Ayers. The next day, Goody Ayers visited the Kelly home and shared a bowl of broth with the young nice. girl. It does sound nice, but you sipping from opposite ends of this broth? That's a great question. How's that working? Two straws? In the broth? <laughs> <laughs> that night, 
Elizabeth takes ill and for the next five days suffers from prolonged stomach pains and was delusional, screaming about how Goody Ayers was hurting her. Okay. I this is exactly your story. It It is. However, I can see an even closer correlation between illness and Ayers. I know. Because she brought over some broth and then Elizabeth feels like shit. Yeah, does it have to be witchcraft? Could right. it just be like poisoned broth? Yes. Uh, P.S. Or just like bad broth. Yeah, it's not. I don't think it's bad broth or poisoned no, broth or yeah. anything. But but you're right. You if you wanted to make that connective leap, yeah, it's right there. They shared a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> who among us? So, uh, grasping at any explanation for their loss, which is tragic, mm-hmm. Elizabeth's parents saw the hand of the devil at work. Oh. And were soon convinced that Elizabeth had been fatally possessed by Goody Ayers. Possessed? I know. That's what they say. But it doesn't mean possession the way that we think of it. It's like tormented. Yeah. Yeah. She's being overtaken in some way. Exactly. Uh, And accused her of strangling their daughter through the use of black magic. Mm. Now, brace yourself. I'm going to tell you something that I find genuinely scary. Okay. But given that it's things that an eight-year-old kid allegedly really said as she's dying. It's also sad. Yeah. But again, imagine that you're living in the 1600s. No. And <laughs> and and somebody that you love is in bed in pain and says the following oh, to you. God. Especially to you. Father, father. <laughs> help me, help me. Good good wife Ayers is upon me. She chokes me. She kneels on my belly. She will break my bowels. Oh my God. She pinches me. She will make me black and blue. Good wife Ayer torments me. She pricks me with pins. She will kill me. Oh, father, set on the great furnace and scald her. Get the broad axe and cut off her head. An eight-year-old said set the great furnace? I mean, uh, this what? Is, it's a totally different time. <laughs> I, I think of that course, furnaces played a more important immediate role in the household. Certainly. Because like in I your house, know. it took up like half the room. The I furnace. know. Just the idea of setting the great furnace. Sounds, the great furnace. I don't know. It sounds metaphorical, even though it's not. It's, right. Exactly. Um, but I also can't imagine she said all this in one paragraph like that. I wouldn't think so. Although Reagan said all kinds of crap in The Exorcist. So. You're right. Who knows? Reagan had a mouth on her. Oh, there's no getting around that. I, um, it's, it's horrific. Yeah. And and like, again, weirdly to understand just like the perspective of people at the time you have, and it's, and it's an incredibly defeating feeling today. If you Mm -hmm. know somebody that's going through like an illness, there's nothing that you can do. Yeah. But be with them. Right. And here. You know, she kneels on my belly, she pinches me. That's like torture, obviously for her, but for the father she's talking to and whoever. And for them to believe at this time that, yeah, get the broad axe and cut her head off and this might stop? Right, right. Oh my God. The, the point not being that you have to kill a person, the point being that like there's a, there's a solution, however violent and barbaric Mm -hmm. you can to them there's a solution to them there's a solution and you can at least grasp the notion of them being like i'm gonna do whatever it takes right right it's like taken yeah it's like uh yeah it's like liam neeson specific set of skills i've got a specific set of skills you're a witch a broad axe have you been kneeling on my daughter's belly (laughs) have you broken her bowels because i'm gonna do whatever it takes to get you yeah like it's i don't know i'm I'm so i know again i don't want to no sympathy for the people that were demonizing women and, and torturing them and killing them but it's like a desperate, scary time yeah. to be alive. Yes. So they think they're doing the best thing that they can do. Yes, exactly. Which again, doesn't mean it's not evil, but it's not. It's totally evil. It's, it's totally evil. It, this must have been a nightmare time to be alive. Yes. Um, but this didn't help. Quote <laughs> Adding fuel to the fire were rumors that Ayers enjoyed spreading stories of encounters with the devil. Oop. All that right. didn't help things. That good wife Ayers might have been out there being like, I love talking to the devil. I would keep that quiet keep during that this time. Hush, hush. Now, here's the next figure that's going to enter our story, which he's almost a footnote, except I think, again, just to illustrate what a nightmare it was to live in the 1600s. Here comes <laughs> Dr. Bray Rossiter. Oh, gorgeous name. I have to assume that being a quote unquote doctor or physician in the 1600s yeah. Was a pretty plum gig. Probably. You just make up anything. 
Yeah, but you know what's going on. You're he taking that little no. thing that you bang people's knees with for reflex and you're like listening to it. Yeah, you're listening to it. You're whispering to yeah. it and stuff. <laughs> Tell me what's wrong with them. Right. <laughs> you know, rubbing it on their forehead and then sniffing it yeah. to figure out like <laughs> what they're suffering. Like it's like totally like it's madness. It's just madness. I know. So here's what he did. Dr. Bray Rossiter. This should be like a historical achievement, but it all is, it's all wrong. He conducted the first ever autopsy in Connecticut. Oh. How do you do? <laughs> you can be the judge, okay? <laughs> now, if I if I said that, if I tell you that I think being a doctor or a physicist is like a great job in the 1600s, because nobody can quite, you're beyond reproach. It must Everyone be believes so... whatever you're going to say. <laughs> right. It must be so strange to like, although, I mean, obviously, I'm sure that people will look back at now and say the same things about us. To be kind of like early in the development of like science. land and science and everything, but you think you've like got it and I, you know it. I bet I'm good at this. Yeah. But no. <laughs> and it's like, it's probably, it's gotta be to some degree what people are going to think about now in the future. Right. That's what I just said. Yeah. The they're going to think the, we look yeah. like little dummies. Absolutely. So, uh, he's assisted in the first ever autopsy in Connecticut by schoolmaster William Pitkin. Hmm. Hard to be the schoolmaster that day. Yikes. Yeah. That's an awful gig to have. I'm calling in sick. What do I have to do? What? I never said I could do this. I feel like I've seen other things where like this the schoolmaster is given way too much responsibility. They're like the mayor. <laughs> like, the mayor of children. Yeah. Yeah. So um uh here's the quote about the autopsy. Okay. All right. In the end. The doctor, Bray Rossiter, found that Elizabeth had not died of natural causes, mm -hmm. but of preternatural Ooh. causes. Okay. His autopsy notes stated that the whole body was pliable, without stiffness or contraction. Much of the skin appeared bruised, but the throat contained a large amount of blood, and the gullet was contracted like a hard fishbone. Though Elizabeth Kelly had suffered... Wait. Oh, the Rossiter's medical report did not state that Goody Ayers was a witch. He swore that Elizabeth Kelly had suffered unnatural harm. Hartford residents read between the lines, interpreting that the autopsy proved Goodwife Ayers was a witch. What the hell was going on? Why'd she look all bruised? Is it, was it just that the body was turning blue? Well, and they're like, oh, bruises everywhere. The, the, this article also uh, said this. Years later... The notes of the autopsy were examined by professionals uh -oh. who would state that the symptoms Rossiter described are common to corpses uh, well. that are several days old. Uh, in 1925, Dr. Walter R. Steiner reviewed the autopsy notes, stating that Dr. Bray Rossiter, quote, mistook the signs of beginning decomposition for something supernatural. Hmm. Okay. Which is to say, Dr. Bray Rossiter... You didn't know what you were doing. No. And uh How could you? It's a it's a real shame. Yeah. It's a real shame. It seems like it led to quite a bit of trouble for Goody Ayers. I think it did. Yikes. It reminded me though, it made me want to watch Sleepy Hollow. Oh, I know. When you were talking about the autopsy thing, I was thinking the same. Performing an autopsy, which is like, you know, if you know what you're doing, it's like, yeah, you can you can understand what happened to the body. Right. right? You can get some answers there. Was he like a lawyer or something? Isn't it some sort of job where he shouldn't be doing an autopsy? Kind of like the schoolmaster. <laughs> I he did have a he did have like a kid assist him. I think in that movie. I'm Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Pretty of. sure. No, he did. He had, he had like a ward. Bring me the youngest boy in yeah. the county. He's, he has to see this. <laughs> but uh, like Ichabod Crane in that movie has like a weird bag full of weird tools, and everyone's like, "You're a monster." I know. And He's got like, that big monocle. Yeah, yeah. It, that's a great weird moment just before some sort of science and order takes hold for yeah. people to be like, ew, you you want to look at the body, you freak? You're sick. You're disgusting. <laughs> and it's like cops would go to a crime scene and just step through all the blood and be like, ooh, I get on my shoe. Instead of like securing it. I know. You know? So anyway, 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 that's just a little aside about the autopsy, which is interesting. Yeah. But so now everybody thinks because of this botched autopsy which is essentially like i'm not saying it was goody ayers but this death definitely was supernatural yeah everyone thinks goody ayers is a witch oh so what are we gonna do now 
because you talked about a period of time where witches weren't necessarily convicted because that guy was in charge. Yeah, uh, John Winthrop Jr. Yeah. Um, but Hartford certainly had a history of trying, uh, of accusing, trying, uh, convicting, and executing witches. Well, yeah. I mean, this was before then. When I asked before, you said this kind of started in like the 1640s or something. Yeah. And he started as the head of the court or whatever in 1658. So there's like a good long stretch. A good long stretch. doing all that. So what's going to happen now to Goody Ayers? That's my question, Will. Do you think? Well, I'm going to tell you right this second. Seems like big trouble. Goody Ayers and her husband, William, run away. Ah. They get away. They get out. Spoiler alert. We, to my knowledge, we never really find out what happened to them. Smart. They they just get the hell out of town. It's Smart. It's believed that they likely fled to New York or Rhode Island, mm -hmm. essentially never to be heard of again. Wait a second. What if Goody Ayers resurfaced in East Hampton as Goody Garlic? Oh my God. Well, this happened after your story, so it seems pretty, oh. seems pretty unlikely. Hmm. But there could so be. So it does. But what I'm here to posit to you is a time loop. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I was still thinking about the 1640s of it all. I forgot this wasn't then. <laughs> yeah, this is like a decade after yours. Right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Um, but uh, weirdly, they left behind their eight-year-old son. Okay, with who? Uh, he evidently or just like fend for himself because this time was weird. It said that like he was like taken in by a kindly family and and given a trade to learn. So that's good. <laughs> It sucks. I hope it, like, so. It like totally sucks. Like I don't know. Like come on. I, I don't know what they had back then. Give him a PlayStation. What they have probably sixteen. 16- He probably turned into a blacksmith when he was like nine. <laughs> exactly. It's sixteen fifty. Probably what like a PlayStation one. Yeah. Give the kid Crash Bandicoot. Let him see how he fares. <laughs> yeah. Um. Now, uh, evidently, a little bit about Goody Ayers that people have said after the fact. That before she came to Hartford, she had originally lived in London, where she was said to be, quote, a friend to other women accused of witchcraft, huh. including, uh, I guess, a noted uh, a person with their own interesting story, Rebecca Greensmith, who said at her own trial for witchcraft that she, Ayers, and several others had held meetings in the woods where they had, quote, danced and had a bottle of sack. Ew, what the, what is that? Bottle I mean, I know it must be wine or something. I've never heard that before. You pass that bottle of sack? Is it S-A-C? S-A-C-K. Okay, huh, okay. Bottle of sack. I bet sack. it was gross. <laughs> sack drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like weird wine. Like uh, I'm sure. Uh, you know, I don't know, yucky. What's that wine they make yucky in, wine. in prison? It's Pruno. Pruno? What? Seriously. The wine they make in prison? Yeah. What, toilet wine? I think it's called Pruno. There's not one other oh, substance. I have my my screen limits on. Um, there's not one other substance they could be making wine out of. It has to be toilet water. Don't they give them water at lunch? I don't know if it's toilet water that they're making it from. I think that, you know what, forget it. I don't know. We may never know. There's no way to. In fact, there's no way to know no. the answer to this question. No, I have my Opal screen limits on that are unbreakable. Exactly. So uh, Greensmith, just to finish that, that aside, Greensmith and her husband ended up being hanged uh, in oh 1663. Boy. Well, maybe. So Goody Ayers, good for you that you got out of there, right? Goody for you. Maybe Goody Ayers was into witchcraft. Like, you know, I don't think she was like causing ill to children right. or whatever, but it kind of sounds like she was. She was like partying in the woods with this lady who said that they were like, didn't did yeah, the but, lady but say they were doing? She said, she said that, yeah, they partied in the woods and had a bottle of sack. But that's it. It wasn't like, oh, to commune or whatever. Well, but I mean, you understand. It's exactly what you were just saying before about people just sort of pointing the finger at other people mm -hmm. out of desperation and fear and self-preservation. Yeah. Like it wasn't me, it was them. Mm -hmm. Like it could be any number of things. Well, the, but then she moved to Hartford and was talking about how she talks to the devil. So maybe she was into this stuff. Like I'm sure people maybe. were into it. You know what I mean? It just doesn't right. mean that they're hurting yeah. children and stuff. Sure. It's not impossible. Certainly. I'm sure they were. I'm I, sure they were for real. I feel like like yeah. witchcraft practices and like pagan religion goes back so far. It does. And and the, the, the definition of what a witch is, is super malleable, especially at a time where people are desperate to find someone to blame. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm going to say that 99.9% .9 of the time, it's nothing but... 
hearsay oh, and totally. fear mongering and othering and stuff. I guarantee. But I bet that there were people who had spiritual practices that could be looked on as witchcraft who had to keep it on the low. Yeah. And maybe they were. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I don't know. Who knows? But whatever the case happened here, the damage was essentially done. Goody Ayers gets out and for all we know, she lived, you know, to, to a natural death. Who knows? Yeah. But... The death of, of Elizabeth Kelly, and specifically this quack doctor's <laughs> autopsy, <laughs> right. had unleashed panic in Hartford. Within the next year, 10 more witches would be accused. Four of them would be put to death. Eesh. This was the height of the Hartford witch panic, predating the Salem witch trials. Ugh, it's it's crazy. terrible. The it's whole insane. thing is just crazy it really is we really do need to do the the salem witch trials mm -hmm. proper yeah at, we should. At, at some point yeah um now i did i did look up a, a, a couple of other interesting things okay now you mentioned goody gumdrops and goody two shoes and sam goody mm, shout yes. out to joe shout out to sam goody <laughs> um uh goody two shoes chrissy i yeah. I, I got curious the phrase goody two shoes, calling somebody a goody two shoes. This phrase from thoughtco.com. This phrase, which is often used to describe a person, especially a female person, who is ostentatiously virtuous and even judgmental, supposedly came from a 1765 children's story by John Newberry. This isn't just like some phrase that you throw around. There's like an origin to this. Huh. I always like it when we stumble across like some. Like, who would ever think about this? Right. <laughs> ever? Yeah, where goody two-shoes came from. So here's what happens in this story that originates the phrase goody two-shoes. Marjorie Meanwell is an Whoa. orphan. <laughs> That's some, like, Archie Comics Riverdale shit. I know, isn't it? Yeah. Marjorie Meanwell. That's awesome. Is an orphan who has only one shoe. Oh, no. And then she's given a second shoe by a wealthy man. You think the wealthy man might give her two shoes to replace the one shoe as well. He just gives her one shoe because she already has one? Would be nice. Come on, wealthy man. She then goes about telling people, I have two shoes. <laughs> she's nicknamed... Yeah, she deserves it. She's nicknamed Goody Two Shoes, borrowing, borrowing from the meaning of Goody as a title of an older woman to mock oh, her. So it's basically Mrs. Two Shoes. It's basically Mrs. Two Shoes. Oh, look at Mrs. Two Shoes. Ooh. Look at Goody Two Shoes. That's what it is. That's where it comes oh. from. She then becomes a teacher and marries a rich man. The lesson of the story is that virtue leads to material rewards. <laughs> Which is odd. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say it's odd. Yeah, it's not a great lesson. It's not a terrible lesson, but just not as cut and dry as that, I would say. I was trying to figure out why I also copied this down, because it seems irrelevant. But then I realized that everything has its purpose. Sure. Uh However, the nickname Goody Two Shoes also appears in a 1670 book by Charles Cotton with the meaning of being a mayor's wife, mocking her for criticizing her porridge for being cold. God. Essentially. It always comes back to porridge with us, doesn't it? I love it. It's like <laughs> this, this phrase that everyone knows is like, because like somebody complained that her porridge was too cold right. 400 years ago. What the hell. Um, but essentially, it's comparing her privileged life to those who have no shoes or just one shoe. Oh. Look at you, goody two shoes. You've got everything you need. There are people right. out there with one shoe walking around, yeah. and you're complaining that your porridge is cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now eat your slop and <laughs> shut it. <laughs> That's the other half that no one points out. Weird, because we really lean on the goody of it I know. all we do. today, but really the emphasis on the, is on the two shoes back then. The two shoes were significant. Now, William, I saw you scroll back up on your notes. Sorry to break the fourth wall, but I couldn't help but notice that at the bottom of your notes... Yeah. If you don't mind. You've also written the phrase goody gumdrops. I did. Now, what, if anything, did you find out about goody gumdrops? I did research the phrase goody gumdrops. <laughs> it turned out that it was like, <laughs> maybe I should have copied it down. Because, listen, I don't remember now. It's fine. But it was like, it was like somewhere in the 1900s, somebody wrote a comic Starring goody comic gumdrops. book and goody gumdrops was the main character. I, I, and I was like. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> I just moved Don't on. Need that. It didn't end up in my notes, and yet the words goody gumdrops <laughs> remain at the bottom of the page. My eye was drawn to them. You're right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like what what's a good profession for a character named Goody Gumdrops? 
Mm, I, I don't know. Like working at the pharmacy, but where you can get like a soda phosphate or whatever. Oh, that's goody gum drops. And yeah. they give you like a malted. Yeah. And they wear that paper hat because it's the 50s. And they probably hang out with Martha Meanwell. Yeah, Martha Meanwell. Marjorie and, Meanwell. Marjorie Meanwell and goody gum drops. This is like a cinematic universe. The goody verse. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll follow up the success of Wonka yeah. with the Goodyverse. Oh, thank you. I, I certainly I hope so. I love the Goodyverse. Bye-bye, Conjuring-verse. Yeah. Hello, Goodyverse. Welcome to the Goodyverse. The <laughs> dawn of the Goodyverse. Yeah. Get some goodies. Ugh. Well, I mean, there you have it. There are your goodies, I think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really hope you liked the show. Like we said in the middle, you can go find way more of us, our whole second weekly podcast, The Nether the Netherworld Dispatch, at patreon.com slash gttupod. You can also find our website at scaryfun.fun. And you can find us on social media everywhere at gttupod. And individually, I am at Chillin' Kristen. I am at The Myth Traveler. So thank you so much for hanging out with us, everybody. We'll be back next week for more scary fun. But until that time comes, we must travel. Back to the netherworld. Go we. Into the goodyverse. Oh. Good. That's what it is. Yeah. Wonka into the goodyverse. Because that's like Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, you're right. And he meets and all the other confectioneer characters. Yeah, and people think All of I, them. All of them. <laughs> Marjorie Russell Meanwell. Stover. Russell Stover is there. I'm assembling a team. <laughs> Wonka, you just joined a universe that you didn't know the first thing about. Who's the Nick Fury of... Uh, I am Russell Stover. You know who You know who the Nick Fury of the Goodyverse is? Who? Charleston Chu. Char I think that they need to be teaming up to <laughs> defeat Charleston Chu. I'm sorry to contradict you. William! But I think Charleston Chu is going to chew up the world <laughs> okay then heath bar gotta go yeah i don't really like that either honestly but a bridge too far a heath bar and here we are <laughs>